Is the new M2 iPad Pro worth it over the iPad Air 5? Well, let's answer that question by comparing everything, including the displays, the webcams, the speakers, the performance, and everything else. Now, in terms of the design, they're extremely similar. You can see that we finally have the iPad Pro text on the back compared to iPad Air. We have that larger camera bump with the extra ultra-wide camera, the flash, and the LiDAR scanner, so a little bit better in terms of camera capabilities. And on the iPad Air, we actually have a Touch ID power button compared to the iPad Pro which uses Face ID. They both have quad speakers both on the top and on the bottom and the iPad Pro actually has a Thunderbolt port with faster transfer speeds compared to regular USB-C on the iPad Air. Now there are quite a few display differences but first let's compare the speaker quality. <laughs> Wow, that was a big difference, mainly because the iPad Pro has quad speakers instead of just dual landscape on the iPad Air, so it's better in every way. Now moving on to the displays, they're actually very similar. The iPad Pro has an 11 inch display compared to 10.9. The only difference there is that it has a little bit slimmer bezels compared to the Air. It's also a little bit brighter at 600 nits compared to 500. Now the downside of the 11 inch iPad Pro model is that it doesn't come with a mini LED display like the 12 9 inch does, which gives it up to 1600 nits of brightness for awesome looking HDR video, but it's still really good. But the biggest advantage is that the iPad Pro supports 120Hz Pro Motion technology, so you can see how it's a lot more smooth like butter compared to the iPad Air that has a 60Hz display that always stays at 60, while the iPad Pro can dynamically go down to as low as 24Hz to save battery life when watching video or other content. Now that 120Hz also gives a big advantage to the iPad Pro in terms of smoothness of the Apple Pencil because it lowers the latency, making it look a lot more smooth and feel better in terms of the overall experience. But not only that, the iPad Pro now supports the new hover feature where you can see what you're about to draw and the color actually right above the display, which of course is not supported on the iPad Air. Now in terms of keyboard case support, since they both have the smart connector on the bottom right here and they're the same size, they both support Apple's 11 inch Magic keyboard case, which is definitely nice that you can get that on the less expensive iPad Air. But the biggest downside of Apple's Magic Keyboard is that the sides of your iPad are exposed and they could get damaged if you drop it, which is where our partner Moff's iPad Snap system comes in. And it starts with the magnetic friendly iPad Snap case and it protects the sides and corners of your iPad, but it's also magnetic and works perfectly with the Magic Keyboard as well as the Apple Pencil. But I honestly prefer Moff's Float Folio because unlike the Magic Keyboard, it gives you a bunch of different angles for, including one that you could actually use for drawing with the Apple Pencil. Now that of course works because the snap case actually has magnets built into it, which means it works with the rest of Moff's snap system, including the tablet stand, which attaches flat to the iPad case, making it an essential kit for on the go without taking up much space. Basically giving you up to six different angles that you can use your iPad Pro with. And then Moft also has their snap float stand, which is this really cool attachment, which allows you to basically float your iPad. But not only that, it collapses into this nice, sleek, accessory on the back that doesn't take up much room. And then the final piece of the puzzle is Moff's snap wall pad, which you basically stick to any wall and then you can easily mount your iPad for a really cool experience. So if you're interested in any of Moff's magnetic snap system accessories, you can find the links down in the description and pinned comment below. Now moving on, the next thing I wanna compare is the webcams and mics. And as you can see, the quality is pretty decent on the iPad Pro. The only issue is the low 
location of the webcam right here on the side. So when I look at myself, it looks really weird and awkward. I really like the new iPad 10 and where it's located. And now this is on the iPad Air 5, so it looks very similar, although it looks like the quality might be better on the iPad Pro, but we have that same issue. Let me know the difference in the microphones down below. And now with that out of the way, let's get into the performance section of the video, starting off with the speed of the actual storage SSD. And wow, look at that massive difference. Instead of only having 696 megabytes per second read on the iPad Air, we have 1600 on the M2 iPad Pro, and instead of 227, right, 900. That is a massive difference, so you're gonna be able to take advantage of that Thunderbolt port and just faster loading times for games and apps and everything else. But now getting into the actual CPU performance, we have Geekbench open right here, and the new M2 chip has a faster clock speed, 3.48 gigahertz compared to 3.2, and they're both loaded with eight gigs of RAM. Now I know the new M2 chip in the MacBook can go up to 24 gigs, but on the iPad Pro it's limited to 16 and on both of these you can get 16 only if you get a one terabyte storage model or higher so keep that in mind let's run the CPU test here you go we have our scores and the M2 chip has 10% faster single core performance compared to the M1 iPad Air, and in terms of the multi-core, 18% faster, which is actually a pretty good improvement, surprisingly, going from M1 to M2, especially in this thin chassis. Now, I actually wanna test out the Speedometer 2.0 web browsing benchmark, which will give you an idea of the snappiness of each iPad for web browsing, and also for things like using common apps. And as you can see, 378 compared to 330, there isn't that big of a difference in terms of overall snappiness because the M1 chip was already so powerful. Now let's go ahead and run the graphics performance test with Geekbench 5 to see how the gaming related differences are gonna be. And wow, that is a massive difference. The M2 iPad Pro is 57% faster in terms of the graphics and that actually matters a lot because the iPad Pro has the 120 hertz display which means you can play games at up to 120 FPS and really take advantage of that performance, whereas the M1 iPad Air 5 is limited to 60 hertz, and I'd say that the M1 chip is already overkill for that 60 hertz display, so there is a huge divide between these two in terms of graphics. And because of that, I'm gonna run 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Unlimited Test, which is a gaming benchmark. And there you go, we have our score, 41.3 FPS on the iPad Pro compared to 28.1. There's definitely a nice difference there. And now before I give you guys the conclusion on my thoughts on which one you should be buying, I've gotta talk about the prices. Right now you can get an iPad Air 5 for $520, while the M2 iPad Pro is actually also on sale on Amazon for $750. So there's a $230 difference, and I will tell you guys right now, it is worth it. Yes, it's worth spending the extra money for three main reasons. Number one, the display, including the 120 hertz promotion, that is a massive, massive, deal. Number two, using Face ID is extremely convenient and it is just so much better than the Touch ID power button. It brings it to a whole nother level. And then finally, number three, you can actually use that extra performance, which it does have a lot of extra because of the 120 hertz display, including everything else packed into it, including the Thunderbolt port. And of course, as a nice little bonus, those speakers are killer. And I'd say, those things right there are worth spending the extra $230 on the iPad Pro. Honestly guys, if you're going for the iPad Air, just spend the extra money on the iPad Pro. Otherwise, go for something less expensive, like maybe the iPad 10. So with that said, if you disagree with my thoughts on this video, let me know down in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed it, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Check out one of those two right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.